Good evening and welcome to The Nest. I'm your host, Maureen Waititu, and as usual, we discuss real matters from real people, and the most important thing is, how do we move from an unfortunate circumstance into great place of healing and even healing others? The story today is heartbreaking. It's of a little girl many, many years ago who did not feel safe, as a matter of fact, she was put through the most horrific, the most horrific and the most barbaric action that a protector per se should take her through. Many years later, she struggled with it, she's tried to cope with it, but she's trying to normalize her circumstances as she heals other people, both men and women who are going through the same thing or who have gone through the same thing. I call her our hero today. We'll meet her shortly, but we'll be back right after this short video. Rape is a type of sexual assault, usually involving sexual intercourse or other forms of sexual penetration carried out against a person without that person's consent. Sadly, most cases of rape are by people well known to the victims. According to statistics, the probability of a female being raped is higher than that of a male, but this is not to say that boys are not raped. Sexual harassment happens from homes, workplaces, places of worship, the streets, and most recently on online platforms. Victims of rape are stripped of their dignity and lose their self-esteem and worth, leaving them traumatized while some end up committing suicide. It is even worse when society shames the victim with questions like how was she dressed? What was she doing out in the night? Why did she get drunk? Why did she agree to accompany him, among many other unreasonable questions? Gender activism is a response to gender-based social conflicts, which emphasizes direct vigorous action, especially to challenge violence against a particular gender. Gender activists, especially on rape, ensure to keep safe the vulnerable, empower as well as help victims of rape get past their trauma and rise above the pain. Today on the show, we look into gender activism and get to understand deeper on what it involves. Welcome back. We have a beautiful, beautiful guest. Her name is Lucy. And as I was telling her earlier, anyone who comes to the nest, the show, is our hero because they use their story to share, to inspire, to encourage, and to actually give hope to that young person out there who's been through the same who's gone through the same, who has uh, experienced the particular circumstances and also rising out of it. Basically, there's always life after bad or the worst of circumstances. Lucy, karibu sana. Asante sana, Marie. Really, thank you so much for joining us. Asante. Yes, could you introduce yourself to our people? Okay, my name is Lucy Isiko. Uh -huh. I am a mother. Wow. I'm also a gender activist, uh -huh. and I'm a daughter. Yes. <laughs> and also, um, I'm an entrepreneur. Yes. I'm a hairdresser, so yeah. I wear so many hats. Yes. Yeah. The, you know, there's something about women. We just know how to do it all. We it, multitask. We multitask. That's why uh, we, we have to really give and celebrate women that. And, and, and guess what? We also have so much power within us. Mm -hmm. And hence, uh, our honestly, the capes, they, they belong to us. We are the sure, real superheroes. Sure. Anyway, just that, just that's just me getting you know mm -hmm. into it so uh, Lucy could you tell us about your upbringing where did you grow up uh, how was life as a child mm -hmm. yes so uh, I grew, I was born in Korea uh -huh. in Migori County uh -huh. by then it was in Nyanza uh -huh. uh, where I was born mm -hmm. was in a, a humble family okay but uh, unfortunately uh, my dad passed on when I was about three to four years oh, old, dear. I can't actually yeah. remember. Yes. Then after that, mm -hmm. now the family that my mom had got married into, mm -hmm. they had issues. Mm -hmm. And six months into my dad's demise, mm -hmm. uh, our my siblings mm -hmm. passed on, three, mm -hmm. three of them. Yeah. I remained. Oh, no. 
Yeah. Now mm -hmm. when I remained, mm -hmm. uh, there were issues with our family. Yes. My mom ran away. Yes. But when she ran away, mm -hmm. I see. So I think she was overwhelmed with the loss of her husband mm -hmm. and three kids. Yeah, and the in-laws. And the in-laws. Yeah, she yes, had to disturbing her. Yeah, yes. She had to run away. When yeah. she ran away, she mm -hmm. left me behind. Mm -hmm. Now that's when my problem started. Mm -hmm. I was overworked. I didn't even start going to school. Oh dear. How old were you at this time? At this time, I was about uh, six, seven years. Mm -hmm. Now, when I was about nine years, yes. my uncle, mm -hmm. stepbrother to my dad, mm -hmm. defiled me. Oh, no. Yeah. And this, oh, no. he didn't do it once or twice, he did it several times. Oh. And he could threaten me. Mm -hmm. Actually, I remember there is a, a day, mm -hmm. a night he came, mm -hmm. and he told me, even if you tell anyone, they won't trust you, they won't mm -hmm. believe in you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I kept it to myself. Okay. I couldn't tell anyone. Okay. I didn't have someone close to me. Mm -hmm. uh, Lucy, um, I'm really sorry about uh, the circumstances, but um, you know, for the sake of the person watching at home, uh, it's good to know how this can be prevented in future. How a little girl like you, you are about seven years? Seven to eight. Seven to eight, eight yeah. yes. Uh, so um, how did it begin? with uh, your step uh, step uncle or step, the, your uh, uncle, the, your he uncle. was a step brother to my to dad. dad yes mm -hmm. so there is this one night i used to sleep in my my uh, my cube alone mm -hmm. or in my room alone mm -hmm. then this one night he came mm -hmm. Uh, he tried to to force himself into me mm -hmm. yeah because i couldn't even uh, to re I couldn't even resist, so he yes. overpowered Strong, me. And you're just a baby. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then he told me if I ever told anyone, he would have killed me. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's how it started. And then mm -hmm. he continued doing it severely that mm -hmm. I can't even count. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for how long did it go on? Um, and, uh, you know, just walk us through you know what were you thinking i know you were just a child and most of those memories could be buried but still very vivid uh, how long did it go on for it went on for a long time mm -hmm. i can't really tell mm -hmm. because when i couldn't uh, withstand it all mm -hmm. I, I ran away mm. Yeah, but it went on for a long, long time. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, how, how old were you when you decided enough is enough and uh, took off? I think I was in uh, class five okay. now. Okay. Okay. So I started asking people mm -hmm. to tell me where my maternal grandma, uh, uh, grand grandparents' mm -hmm. place was, and right. that's when uh, I ran away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I went there. Mm -hmm. My mom was was not there. Mm -hmm. I stayed with my grand mom mm -hmm. for about three months, and mm -hmm. then I think they had told my mom that I had come. Mm -hmm. The mom now came okay. for me. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. But. Still, mm -hmm. at this point, still, I couldn't even be able to, to tell to my mom tell her, yes. yeah, what mm -hmm. had happened to me. Mm -hmm. I remember when she came, mm -hmm. she, she told me I was not in good health. She took me to the hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, they did just a general mm -hmm. checkup, check yes. then we went back. Uh -huh. uh, she left me at mm -hmm. my grandma's mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. She came in Nairobi because she was staying here in Nairobi. She was working and yeah. staying here. Yes, and uh, so when she took you to the hospital, uh, were the doctors able to pick anything? No, they uh -huh. didn't. They just did a general checkup mm -hmm. about uh, what, uh, now they took the blood samples. Right. Yeah, and the urine, the stool, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. all. Yeah, mm -hmm. but the other thing, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And while I was at my grandma's place, mm -hmm. now where I come from, mm -hmm. it's a, a cutting community. They oh, practice yes. FGM. Yes, yes, yes. No, I do want to to go through it. Yes. For me, yes. I had a reason as yes. why I didn't want to go through it. Uh -huh. It's because uh -huh. I thought mm -hmm. if I went to to that mama mm. to cut me, maybe yes. she would have one. Yeah, oh, that dear. something yes. was not right with right. me. Now I refused. Mm -hmm. the, the others didn't know mm. why I didn't want. Of course. Yeah. Uh, yes. Now. Mm -hmm. There now came 
like there was stigma because mm. I had not gone through yeah, FGM. <laughs> My peers mm. didn't want to associate with me. Right. Uh, for them, they, they felt that I was not part of them because uh, in our community, mm. once you've gone through FGM, yes. now you are uh, fathers, like now you've gone from girlhood to, to, to manhood. Yes. Now for me, I'm yes. still in yes. this other stage. Yes. So no one, di no one wanted to associate with me. Mm. For me, that I felt like rejected oh, yes. yeah and then the, the insults mm -hmm. i started uh like i was isn't doing well in my education mm. now mom mm. had uh to figure out how to get me out of that environment yes. she brought me in nairobi yes. from there now okay. my academics uh, improved yes yes but still mm -hmm. i had not even revealed to yes. anyone yes yes that something mm. was not good with me mm. But there were like signs mm -hmm. that maybe they, that could have led them to to know that I wasn't okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would even wake up in the morning and then I feel like I want to cry, right. cry, cry. Yeah. I was at some point I was mm -hmm. stubborn. Yes. Uh, no one could tell me anything yes. that I do. Yes. Yeah, I felt like initially I felt my mom. Yes. Couldn't have left me there. Yes, so you were bitter. I was bitter. Yes. Yeah, at some point I felt like I hated her. Mm -hmm. uh, now after a while, now I finished my uh, my primary education. I was taken to high school. Mm. In high school mm. still, mm. I withdrew from yeah, yeah, others. Yes, yes. I was just alone in my own world. Yes. I was still, I couldn't even listen to, to teachers. Mm. Uh, after immediately after form four, mm -hmm. I felt like my my mom or because my mom had remarried, okay. I felt that there was no love. Uh -huh. Yeah, she put everything else before you. Yeah, that's right. right. Mm -hmm. And that's when I found someone mm. who told me he loved me, and they fell for him, and yeah. that's how I got married at right. that young age. Yes, yes. Not that I wanted, yes, yes. but you because need, I, I... You were craving yeah. to be loved. Talked it on my Facebook account. I wrote, and uh, I reached in the middle. I couldn't finish it, and I didn't post. I deleted it. And then I said for about uh, four to five months in... Um, September on 15th, 2018. Now that's when I wrote everything. I wrote and then posted it on my social media. Mm -hmm. Immediately I posted. Mm -hmm. I remember the first a comment was, mm -hmm. because the person who commented was from my Home. my tribe. Yeah. Oh, to tribe, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. So for him, mm -hmm. he picked the, the FGM that had not uh -huh. gone through. So yes. he told me, and uh, do know that whatever you have, in between your legs, you are abnormal. Yeah, that's what he wrote. When I saw that comment, I locked out of social media on Facebook now. And I cried, I cried. After one hour, I wanted to come back and delete the, the, the comments, post. Yeah. I found out I had 150 something comments. Apart from the one that the guy had uh, talked negatively, negatively yeah. that that's what encouraging me yeah, and yeah. even my, uh, the people that I had gone to school together now could they relate how I was like well, how was I behaving, behaving. You were, yeah, yeah. Mm. now from there I got that courage to talk about it up to now mm -hmm. I share my story even mm -hmm. without crying because I remember that that, that day mm. I cried mm. uh, I didn't want uh, like to share it as such, but nowadays yeah. I shall say that I'm healing. Yeah. I can't say that I've healed completely, yes, yes. but I'm healing. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, I, Lucy, I think you are so brave. I. It's a very um, brave thing for a little girl like yourself at that time to be abandoned, uh, and um, no excuses for mom, but. Um, she could have gone through what she went through and she thought that was her only way out and um, did she ever find out 
uh, what happened. Yeah, she found out now mm -hmm. after I had talked about it. I had to tell her yeah. because she's not on social media. Okay. And now I talked to her mm -hmm. and she was asking me, why didn't you tell me? I told her, even if I told you, could you have believed me? Yeah. Yeah. Because even up to now, there are those people who do not believe, believe that that, that happened. I, yeah. Yeah. There are those even who try to silence me. Oh I right. remember there's a time I was talking about it on my WhatsApp status. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had a, a contact that that person was a pastor. He came into my inbox and he told me, stop talking about this thing because you are not going to get someone to marry you if you you keep on talking about it yeah. now you see there are those people who will still feel that i need to stop talking about it it's or unfortunate to share. yeah mm. and lucy never stop for the other little girl who could be going through the same thing or the other little boy would be going to say through the same thing don't stop Thank because you, it takes a lot of uh, bravery it takes a lot of courage to come out and speak and I think I I wow I had never met a strong woman like you who can go through everything you've gone through and still rise and say hey um, many years later even trying marriage and you know even trying to live a normal life and then on top of that there's a the FGM issue then there are these men trying to silence you because it's not fitting their narrative mm -hmm. uh, and here you are and you've started a journey whereby you say I'm not gonna be silenced I will share my story for the sake of the other person out there and I think I really applaud you for that and um, along the way maybe you can also tell us about what you're doing currently uh, with the activism uh, and uh, how people can reach you where we can find you, how we can hear more about this story, because I know it's very deep, right? Yes. yes. So uh, immediately after I had uh, shared my story, yeah. now I thought of starting an initiative back in Korea, yeah. because I felt mm -hmm. uh, young girls and women not have a chance mm -hmm. to, to voice out their, their issues or what they are going through. Right. Actually, even up to now, mm -hmm. I find women who want, like, they will pass through me like, to, to air out their True. issues. True. I find so many of them in my inbox and in my messenger. Someone asks me yeah. for my number. Then I will even put it out there yeah. on their behalf yeah. because yeah. some of them fear that if they talk uh, without, uh, like, when they reveal their uh, identity, yes. maybe they. They be will in, in be problem. victimized and uh, stigmatized. Yeah. Now that's when I started an initiative mm -hmm. uh, in Korea. Uh, of empowering women and wow. school going girls. Mm -hmm. There now I talk about FGM, yes. gender based violence, mm -hmm. rape is included, yes. and also we try to talk to girls and give them, they need one, we give them sanitary towels. Mm, and yes. Maureen, I can tell you. Mm -hmm young girls and the women go through a lot in yeah. our community it's all that mm. it's not even it does not reach to the media absolutely yeah yes it's covered out uh, there in the community and there mm -hmm. are those kangaroo courts that they solve True the issues. problems there yes, yes. and the, the woman will just be remain to be mm -hmm. the one on the wrong mm -hmm. side mm -hmm. it is true yeah so yes. generally mm -hmm. that's what i do back mm -hmm at home. Mm -hmm. I go there once in a while, mm -hmm. talk to girls, mm -hmm. talk to the women. Yes. Uh, there are those who, women who have uh, formed self-help groups yes. through me. Yes. Now through that, mm -hmm. they are being able to, to empower themselves. Mm -hmm. They start uh, savings, chamas and right. table banking. Right. And also, mm -hmm. as we talk about that, we also talk about FGM. Mm -hmm. We are also trying to bring the men on board mm -hmm. because men are decision makers in our community still. I agree. So mm -hmm. we can only end FGM if we involve, involve them. Men as well. yeah, we, yeah. Yes. No, that's what I'm doing mm -hmm. here in Nairobi. Yes. Also, 
uh, I'm in an initiative or mm -hmm. uh, an organization here mm -hmm. in Nairobi, okay. whereby we also deal with the empowerment. Mm -hmm. We deal with uh, uh, empowering both men and mm -hmm. women. I love That's that. That's what we are doing. Yes. Yeah, and m more about charity. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and also, yes, yes. Also, uh, as I said, I'm yes. a hairdresser. Yes. Mine is a bit different yes. because yes. I do not own uh, a salon yes. or I go to a particular salon. Yes. I shall go where you the, have the client, client is. Yeah. Yes. And I do it through online. That's wow. where I get my clients. Right. So through this, mm -hmm. I meet a lot of women. Mm -hmm. Now you see when I go, yes, I'm yes, making. Yes. Uh, uh, a hair. client's hair yes. will be able to share. Yes. This client may tell mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. what they are going through, yes. they have gone through, mm -hmm. and through this, I've met several people yes. who are uh, rape survivors. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have many of them on that they do not want to yeah. come out. Yeah. Someone will tell you, uh, I just want uh, a counselor. If you can be able to connect me with one, yeah. I will be okay. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Lucy, I'm, I'm in awe of the woman you are. I'm so proud of you Thank for you. turning your very, very unfortunate incident for a long time into a positive initiative. And uh, towards the end, of course, you'll tell us the name, where we can find you, how we can support you, because I know what you're doing is incredible. Thank but you. my greatest, greatest celebration of you right now is that you're able to tell this story without shedding a tear you're able to recognize that it is a journey of healing and you'll get there but you're not doing it alone you're doing it with all these women you carry with you and sure. men and I, again i love how you're not leaving out the boy child because there can never be change without involving everybody in the world let me tell you more. Yes. Like uh, last year mm -hmm. alone, I had five cases of sodomy. Men too are being sodomized. And then there's that uh, notion out there that men are strong, so they're not even supposed to talk. So these men had been sodomized. Mm -hmm. I remember one of them reached to me mm -hmm. when it was two, two weeks late. And he had to talk about it or open up to me mm -hmm. when he couldn't even go for long call. Oh, That's dear. when he tried to reach out to me. Oh, because no. he, on my bio on, like, mm -hmm. on Facebook, mm -hmm. I've written there I'm a rape survivor and uh, I've encouraged people to, to reach out to me. That's right. when he reached out to me. Wow. So oh, even yeah. men, mm -hmm. young boys are true, being sodomized. True, true. Some that they mm -hmm. keep quiet. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. These things are happening to both genders. It's, it's all not only for in women. Yeah. 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 Lucy, I think you are a special woman, and I'm really glad that you're able to take care of everybody. And it's a challenge for all of us out here to realize that we are we are human beings at the end of the day. So what if men are stronger than women? And they've been going through this since time immemorial. However, we're going to take a short break and uh, you know, we'll have our expert of the day and uh, we'll hear more about now the psychological effect and the mental effect of being a rape or sodomy survivor. And again, thank you so much for sharing your story so bravely. Thank and you. I hope this is just the beginning also of our journey with The Nest with you. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you. Guys, I cannot fathom the pain of a young girl seven years, six years, being defiled by a protector. It's happening to boys too. And Lucy's story is full of awe. As far as I'm concerned, she is a real hero, or a shiro, as we like putting it here on the nest. We'll take a short break and we're going to have our expert of the day who will also walk us through things that one should do whenever this happens, whether it's the sodomy, whether it's the defilement of the girl child, and also how to take care of themselves in the psychological and mental way, maybe differently from what Lucy did, because now she's empowered and she's empowering, but we still have to keep on the message. See you right after the break. Mm -hmm.